Radical Red just got a new update and we're checking it out today. They finally added Generation 9 Pokemon. We can finally use everybody's favorite Pokemon, Lechonk. Not only that, a lot of the Pokemon battles in this game have also been changed around to make some even harder, but some of them do also get easier. There's new abilities, new moves, some Pokemon had their stats totally changed around. This update is going to be absolutely insane. So today we're going to try and beat Pokemon Radical Red with only the new Paldean Pokemon. Now before we jump into it, let me know what your favorite Generation 9 Pokemon is. Personally, I really love Walking Wake. I didn't think they could make Suicune even cooler, but they managed to do it somehow. And if you could smash one leg, that would be the perfect number. With all of that out of the way, let's jump right into the new Radical Red update. It's your boy Zwiggo and our rival's name is going to be Mr. T. After turning on minimal grinding mode because I don't want to miss with any EVs this run, we got dragged into the lab by Professor Oak and chose our starter. Obviously we can choose between Sprigatito, Fuecoco or Quaxley. From what I know, Meowskarata is pretty overpowered with a protein choice band flower trick that always critical hits. Believe me, I would have preferred to go with any of the other two, but we're trying to destroy this game so let's pick the weed cat. I named him after one of my very own cats, Milo, and ate my rival's burning lizard for breakfast. While getting my Pokedex, one of the professor's aides got a stroke and kept bumping her head into a bookcase in the bottom left corner. They also immediately added a new area at the start where the Tangela normally are. This area is blocked off by a fence which has now been removed and can capture a ton of great Pokemon here like a Lechonk that I honestly never used, Eggman the Wiglet, Pooper the Paldean Wooper, and Mastiff the reskinned Puchiena. I headed over to Viridian capture Palmy, Pikachu clone nobody wanted. I'm just kidding, it's obviously super cute. I also captured a beautiful Wattrill here and then went to Viridian Forest to capture Walking Squidward. Lastly, I captured something that rolled with his own poop and went to the second route to Thundershock my rival's Charmander and newly acquired Starly with my very own Electric Bird. He then ran away for his life and we ran into another rival in Viridian Forest, this time Brandon, who's looking for Joltix here, but from what I know, they're not available in Viridian Forest. So after Weed Cat sends him the right way, by taking down Corfish and Trico, he thanks me with an EV scanner, which is not needed because we're playing minimal grinding mode. Our stats are already maxed out. In this new update, they also added an extra region to Viridian Forest where you can capture some more encounters, which gave me access to Taruntula and a staple of every Western cowboy movie, Bramblin. I also ran into one of my favorite Pokemon that looks really good in 2D, Nimble. It's just too bad that its evolution, Lokix, looks really cool but really isn't all that great stat-wise. In Diglett's Cave, I grabbed Mario's breakfast, Nackley, and moved over to Pure. Computer City, where we change all of our Pokemon's natures to the right ones and go to the museum to take on Faulkner. His team almost had an entire makeover, now having a Rufflet, which he did already have before. The other two have been changed around for a Wattrill and a Flittle. The only thing I really had to take out on this team was the Wattrill, and with Huga on my side, that was no problem. Then my very own Wattrill could clean up the rest of the two with Electro Webs. We then moved over to Brock, who only added a Varum to his team instead of the Vulpix that he had before. This room luckily went down to a single 4 times super effective mud shot, while Huga took down Arkin and Squidward finished off Onyx with Absorbs, but then got exploded on by Geodude, which luckily ended the battle quickly. A time save right there. The level cap has increased, which means we can evolve our Pooper into a Poop Sire with the best sprite that has ever existed, and Florgato looks very, very slick. Glitz went into the sun a little bit too much and turned from white to red, and there is also three of them now. I get my Dynamax band and wishing pieces, and then we can get some very awesome Raiden encounters, but first I grab Bob Ross the Shrewdle, who will paint all over you if you don't watch out, and a little bit further on we grabbed a family of mice. In Mount Moon we grabbed probably the most popular Generation 9 Pokemon, Tink Tink, and in my very first Raiden I grabbed a Satoddle. At the end of the cave we destroyed Archer's Pokemon with Wugtrio's Aqua Jet, none of them can stand up to me, causing me to make my way over to Cerulean City, where on the Golden Gate Bridge, T was waiting for me. With a combination of my Wuk Trio's Aqua Jets and Milo's Bites and Seed Bombs, we exploded his entire team. 
After beating up all the trainers, my Bramblim evolved into Bramble Ghast, and Mastiff evolves into Mabostiff. The only dog in Pokemon that's managed to make me cry. Now it's Misty time and it starts off amazing as my newly evolved Wildy can one-shot Frogadier and two-shot Stormy with Seed Bombs and Shadow Sneaks. I hit a couple of Seed Bombs on Clawsire as well but it was a bit too bulky so I swapped out into Milo who could set up a Home Claws, somehow survive a Poison Jab and counter back with two more Seed Bombs to take down this Water Absorbed Giant. Last up was Float Souls, so I swapped out into Mabostiff to hit it with Comeuppance, which is basically a counter or mirror coat that works both ways. I knew I couldn't take another hit and I really wanted to finish this fight Deathlets, so Eggman came out, sucker punched and won me the battle. Handsome Squidward evolved into an even handsomer Squidward. I also did the puzzle to unlock the remove reminder and captured a Cloth, which I still think deserves an evolution. I also captured a Tadbulb and once this thing evolves it's going to be hella bulky. I captured two Charcadets to get Armor Rouge and Cerulege, and finally a bird that has a striking resemblance to Metal Bat. We stole our boat ticket from a Clefairy and evolved our two mice into a mousy family. I'm not sure if we can get a family of three in Radical Red as well, but that would be cool. I defeated every Johto player's worst nightmare with me and got myself the Eviolite, which was kind of useless at this point in the game, but I'll still take it. I got super lucky because one of my Radents turned out to be a Veluza, and I don't even know why I'm lucky because this thing kind of sucks. I mean, despite it going a million miles an hour in the lakes, it still has a this atrocious of a speed stat. I evolved my Nimble into low kicks that reminded me a little bit too much of Batman, and finally went to my luxury cruise, ate some lobster, and challenged Mr. T. Bramblegast puts in the work once more, taking down Laundret, Lunatone, and bringing Crowd onto only 1 HP because of its sash with seed bombs, but it does eventually fall to a knockoff. Batman could then clean up with a Sucker Punch and a lunge on the last Pokemon Grovile, and as we then throw Mr. T off the boat, grab our HM for cut, and head over to Lieutenant Surge, who had a team that totally spanked my ass a couple of times, so I decided to add an electric type of my own on the team, that being Belly Bolt. I still find it super weird that this are not its eyes. Starting off with Wildy once again, seed bombing is Pinchurchin, who is now part water type. He now added a Palmont to the team with Ice Punch that obviously is going to take me out. I brought in my newly acquired Belly Bolt and thought it would do well against this Palmont, but even after lowering its speed with two mud shots, it didn't take it out because of drain punches and I still wasn't faster, so I went down, brought in Squidward, who could then finally finish it off with another mud shot. But I kind of needed a speed lowerings because otherwise Squidward would not have outsped and I probably would have gotten destroyed by an ice punch. That the rest of the battle became really easy as I kill its very own belly ball with two mud shots, Raichu as well, and finally Mega Manectric, who almost took me down with a flame burst, also fell because of the speed lowering. With a new level cap come new evolutions, so we grab Meowskarada for the team and kill Kilo Watchable, a Pokemon that I personally really like, but just like Cloth, still think deserves a new evolution. Raidens give me even more luck as Fiddle decided to join the team, so once that evolves we're going to be lunar crashing everything. Then it was Rock Tunnel time, where I ran into my favorite middle stage evolution of all time, Arctabax. In my opinion it resembles a Spinosaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs, and it does it so well. But let me know in the comments down below what your favorite middle evolution of all time is. In Rock Tunnel I managed to find the ace of the worst champion of all time, Gita, in Glimmit, so hopefully we'll be able to lay down some toxic spikes on my enemies. After borrowing our way through Rock Tunnel, we make our way over to some more sand, where we find a guy that never stops smiling in Earthworm. And with its ability Earth Eater, this thing is going to be overpowered, as opponents are going to want to hit it with earthquakes. Now it's time to bring a basic evolution, because we got a few of our own. Baby Whale evolved into a Set Titan with an Ice Stone. With a Dusk Stone, my Charcadet evolved into Cereal Edge, my other Charcadet just needed a Sunstone to evolve into Armor Rouge. I also got everybody's favorite Generation 9 Pokemon, Tinkaton, that will bonk you on the head if you don't subscribe right now. With these new additions, I headed over to the Flower Garden and challenged Erica. Blight showed up and flame wheeled her Gorilla. Her cat, on the other hand, was a bit too much for me to handle and could take a flame wheel pretty good, so my Swordsman dies on the battlefield. I brought in Cannon, but the Meowskarada, the decided to U-turn out into a Lolan Electrode that got scorched by Flamethrower, Mega Venusaur put me to sleep and took me down with a couple of Earth Powers, so I brought in Kid Bring, 
He beat that Venusaur with its wings, but it wasn't enough and got put to sleep as well, but because there is a sleep clause in Radical Red, I swapped into Batman, who just needed one more hit to bring down the giant plant. Metal Bat's one and only contribution was a brave bird on the next Pokemon Meganium that took it out. Its moment in the spotlight fell soon after, but Meowskarada knocked it off. One last ice spinner from Bebe, and our fourth gym badge is in the pocket. We bribe some British guards with tea and get a beautiful flower named Glimora and Mr. Bob Ross himself, Graphii. And lastly, our Minecraft mob evolved into one of the Minecraft pyramids. After doing some of the spinning, we challenged the big boss Giovanni for his self scope. Starting out with a Nidoking King that hits my jet ski with a thunderbolt, almost causing it to crash, but it still got back up and used an aqua cut to cut it down into little pieces. His Peldean in Tauros was a bit too fast for me and killed me with a close combat straight after, so I muddy watered it with Freddy. Freddy, however, did not have the strength nor the bulk to stand up against Mega Kangaskhan and its kid. Even Tinkaton with a fake out, a Gigaton hammer, and a play rough wasn't enough to take down this giant, as this thing only got scarier and scarier because it's now at plus four because of all the power up punches. However, it's still not faster than my starter, so we take it down with a single seed bomb, Orthworm then finishes me off with a body press and an iron head. Blyde does come in, takes it out with flame wheel, but his last Pokemon Hunchcrow uses it priority sucker punch, and because it always crits, it's an easy one shot for him. Now it's my last Pokemon, the Great Pyramid against Hunchcrow. Luckily, its nice slashes didn't do enough, and two of my rock slides won me the battle. Our poop roars poop transcended, which turned it into Rapska, and with the Sylphs going hand, I headed over to the Pokemon Tower to do some spooky business by capturing a ghost dog that's the most overpowered thing once you give it a choice scarf and a primate that died. After getting the thick club from Marowak, we rescued Mr. Fuji, totally destroyed Morty and his newly acquired Skeleturge to get the Shadow Ball TM that could definitely come in handy later. Time to do some more evolutions. First up, Hero, the Paw Moth, and secondly, Cleopatra, or should I say S? Bathra, and I'm not gonna lie, I only just realized that that's probably where the name came from. Take down the big fat Snorlax and try to head over to Koga, because I always take on Koga before Sylph Co, but I get stopped by an invisible barrier. So instead I went to Sylph Co and speed ran it by only taking on one trainer and immediately heading over to the rival battle with Mr. T. Hero and his Staraptor immediately tied as my Wild Charge didn't take it out and its Brave Bird was a bit too brave for my hero. Luckily the recoil damage crashed in on the big bird and its King Ambit came up against my Annihilate. With just a single cross chop, this mighty king fell. Not even its Choppleberry could save it. Bob Ross came up against Azumarill, but I got Play Rough which lowered my attack which means that Gunk Shot isn't going to one shot anymore and this Azumarill somehow wins this matchup. Espathra can then psychic it into oblivion, but his mega Charizard Y flamethrowers and burns me to the ground as Eggman comes in, hits the triple dive, a new move that will always hit three times, which is enough to take down the big bad dragon. For the last Pokemon jump luff, I just threw out my flower, Venno shocked it twice and made sure we didn't breathe anymore because of the toxins. Next up was a battle that always takes a couple of tribes to get right, and it's all because of Brendan. This time this battle went so well that I only needed two of my three Pokemon, Annihilate and Eggman. Triple dive, cross chops and stomping tantrums were all I needed, take down their Golvengos, Houndooms, Mega Mawiles and much much more. It's time to save Silphco because Giovanni is threatening the president, and normally this fight is pretty easy, but they added the Torterra to this team, as well as a Garganacle that made it a lot harder. But the key to winning this battle was putting Orthworm on the team, because it decided to attack a lot with ground type moves, which he can totally negate. It starts out with his Hippo down against my Torchcruel, and I hit it with a Giga Drain while he sets up Stealth Rocks. He then brings in Garchomp, so I use Spore to put it to sleep, but he knows that Sleep Claws exists, so swaps out into Torterra to turn after. I then go into Orthworm, and start hitting it with Iron Heads, until he eventually he forces out his Kangaskhan that also doesn't take Iron Heads too well. After this, he brings in his Excadrill, who I can take down with a single Earthquake. Power up punches from his Kangaskhan do take me out the next turn, but Orthworm has already done its damage, it can be reversed. Milo comes in and even a Flower Thrick from this range of HP doesn't kill, just showing how Kangaskhan really dominates my team. 
Eggman's Aqua Jet is the last thing we need here, so he goes into Garganackle the turn after, which I take down with two triple dives. Hippo down goes down with only one more of those. The Sandstorm damage is racking up way too much, and Eggman falls. So after bringing in Squidward and taking down Torterra with Giga Drain, we only have his last Pokemon Garchomp remaining. We all know what happens next, spamming Giga Drain until it's dead. And with that, Giovanni is defeated. Saving the big corporation, and as a reward, they changed the Twitter logo to something that everybody disliked. So I left that building and shot for the stars as I went into Sabrina's gym. A battle that most people struggle with, but now they've changed around her team and, in my opinion, made it a lot easier to take her down. This is obviously a double battle and you always have to kill the Hatterene on turn one or it will set up a trick room that will cripple your entire team. So with the start of Blight and Milo, this was easy with just a flower trick and a shadow claw, the Hatterene went down. Oh, and all of her Pokemon are shiny too. Guess I should have mentioned that. Mega Gardevoir comes out, the same happens. Flower Trick, Shadow Claw, down. Ursaluna came out and started to protect, so I went for Bitter Blade on the Indeedee, but an expanding force shook me too much and Blight went down. I throw out Eggman and kill Ursaluna the next turn with a Flower Trick and a Triple Dive, then the beautiful shiny Brood Bonnet comes out. But first I take down the Indeedee with Flower Trick. I do get taken out with a close combat, but am able to hit a triple dive on the Brood Bonnet. Oregon 2 comes out, I bring in my Annihilate, Cross Chop twice to take down both of her Pokemon and win this battle. Then you have the choice between going through the cycling area or the normal walking route by the water side. And it honestly doesn't really matter which one you pick because you will get your ass kicked. You will have to go to the Pokemon Center multiple times, no matter which Pokemon you bring. So that's how my next few hours went. Eventually we made it to Koga's gym and normally you can always just challenge him but now there is a new update that says that you have to go and take on all of the previous gym leaders except for Sabrina before you can enter Koga's gym. Brock was pretty easy but he has a very cool team now with a great tusk, mega aerodactyl, sandslash which is obviously not a rock type, tyranitar, Amastar, and lastly the best doggo ever is Zuian Arcanine. Obviously nothing my water steel and grass types couldn't have so I immediately headed over to Misty, who now has a Palafin that immediately you turns out into a Ferrothorn, not a water type either. She also had a Kingdra, Seismitoad, Mega Gyarados, the Palafin Hero form, but lastly a Gorbis, which I was pretty surprised to see because it's not that strong of a water type, unless they obviously gave it a massive buff, which they probably did. But the main reason why I really love this fight is because once you win against her, she gives you your very own own Palafin, the only one you can get in game, which means we can now superhero punch our way through the rest of the game. Lieutenant Surge added an Iron Treads, Iron Hands, and Rodon Wash to the team, so nothing really all that notable, even though his Iron Hands did shred me a couple of times. The last rematch we had to do was against Erika, and she had a Hisuian Lilligant, and also a Miascarada that were pretty notable. The rest of her team was easy. For battling Koga, I did also have a Brandon battle that I had to do in front of the Safari Zone. For First up, Blade vs Metagross. I hit my Bitter Blade but then swap out into Batman because I know he is going to switch to Crawdon because I've done this battle like 20 times before winning. A single first impression manages to kill this thing, Metachamp comes out, I go into Blythe again to predict a fighting type move which is Ghost for. then I hit a Shadow Claw leaving him with only 1 HP. Try to take it down with Shadow Sneak but he swaps out into Sceptile, leaving his Metachamp alive. He Mega Evolves and I hit a Shadow Claw but it doesn't do enough, but I did go for Shatter Sneak to turn after because I thought it was going to take it out, but once again this thing was left with like 2 HP and Blythe was done. Batman comes in, cleans up with a Sucker Punch, Axe Kicks, his X Plowed but still goes down to Boom Burst. Milo can then take it out with Knock Off, hit Gardevoir with Flower Trick, but get taken out by a Moon Blast. My Doggers then use his Last Respect, but because I don't have Choice Scarf yet, I get outsped by Medicham the turn after, and get cut into pieces by Psycho Cut. My Belly Bolt hits a Parabolic Charge to take it out, but his last remaining Pokemon, Metagross, Earthquakes me, and I'm only left with Pooper. I manage to survive an Earthquake, counter back with one of my own, and finally defeat 
Brendan. Honestly, one of the more harder battles in this run. He just really has good team synergy and I don't have the best answers for what he throws out. Now, Koga time. He is known for his speedy team, but we have a ton of things that can deal with that. Starting out with a Swellow against my Bebe, I try to use Ice Spinner, but he swaps out into his Ninja immediately. So I swap out into Pooper because I know it's going to go for Hydro Pump and I have Water Absorb. I then get hit with an Ice Beam, take it out with Mega Horn, Iron Valiant comes out and I want to save my Cloth Sire here, so I just decide to sack my Tinkaton but it does have lower defenses because of its close combat, so I bring in Blide, who can take it out with a Bitter Blade and a Shadow Sneak. Then his ace, Mega Toxtricity, comes out. This is why I saved Pooper, so I bring him in, tank a Boom Burst, and take it out with Earthquake, because that's obviously 4 times super effective. Pooper did his job, so he can go down now, bring in Blythe, take down the Aselgore with Blade of Bitterness. Drapion with Choice Scarf comes out, uses Wicked Blow, and takes me out. Bebe comes in, hits it with an Ice Spinner and an Ice Shard gets blown out of the stadium once again, but Batman can then first impression and sucker punch the next Pokemon, Swellow, before going down. Then I bring in my last hope, Belly Bolt, just used one last Parabolic Charge, and that gets me my sixth badge. Koga bows down to the real speed god. In the Safari Zone, we can get a million encounters, and they're almost all from the future and past. Starting out with an Iron Moth, a Pokemon that I personally don't really like all that much, but its counterpart, Slitherwing, is a work of art. They could literally put this in any museum on Earth and it would make it better. I then got the fire and water type Tauros, Fiera and Aguava, but also Brood Bonnet, the Mad Mushroom, Sandy Shocks, the Magneton with legs and hair, Iron Juggles, and finally Gimigul, the chest form which I evolved into Golden Go. I still think this thing's shiny should have been silver. I then barged into a room, stole a guy hate him for surf and joined Goldengo in his golden surfboard. All of these coins made May a gold digger and while she was busy with that, I just entered the mansion, grabbed the grubby key and entered Blaine's gym, which has also been redesigned because now the quiz machines are gone and they make you fight the people before he can get to the bald man himself, which is way more brutal. Oh, and they also turned up the heat in his gym, which makes it permanent sun, which is not great for me. I guess it's time to put on my sweatpants and knock off Blaine's sunglasses. He starts out with a Generation 9 Pokemon of his own, Armor Rouge, against my Blide. A great matchup for us because we just Shadow Claw, Shadow Sneak, and that thing is out of here. His Mega Charizard Y takes a Shadow Sneak and finishes me off with Air Slash. I bring in Eggman, just go for the triple dive, even though the sun is up, I still kill, but Scovillain is going to be a problem because of its chlorophyll ability. That was right, because it immediately finishes me off with just one hit. I bring in Cloth Sire, hit the poison jab, but it's not enough. And it's able to set up a growth, hit a fire blast, and totally charcoal my ass. So I go into Palafin to jet punch it, and then I use Flip Turn on the next Pokemon, Exeggutor, because I really want to be in my hero form. The perfect opportunity for me to bring out Mana, use first impression and kill this grass psychic type. He then has a Slithering of his own, but this time a shiny one, so I'm very jealous of him. It has Flare Blitz, which is a move mine doesn't have, and that's able to one-shot me. I bring out my superhero, go for the liquidation, tank a close combat with only 13 HP remaining, counter back with a Jet Punch, and go into Typhlosion. I Jet Punch it one last time, obviously it's not enough because of the sun, but I still have Sandy Shocks on the team with one last Earth Power. Power, Blaine's team has been extinguished. I then showed Blaine my special attacking god, and in return, he gave me the choice specs. An amazing item that we'll probably need later on. Brendan then kidnaps me and takes me to a cave, where he starts bickering with a red-haired girl. So we head further in, we run into some weird and never-before-seen Pokemon, named Great Tusk and Iron Treads, which we obviously capture. And like everybody knows already, the next fight that's coming up is my least favorite in the entirety of Radical Red because I always spend hours on it. Well, this time, it actually wasn't half bad. I think it only took me about five attempts before I got it right. It's obviously the Archer versus Ariana one. So let's see what we can do against them. 
I start out with Eggman against Mamoswine, triple diving it and going into Durand, which gets taken out by my Iron Moth's Fiery Dance. I also take down Mimikyu with triple dive from Eggman, and the last Pokemon Mega Hound Doom was no different. Then going into Ariana and her Hatterene, who did take a triple dive, but then they just took me out. So I had to bring out Palafin, hit two jet punches, so I couldn't even use my hero form because the next turn Honchkrow came out and superpowered me to death. Kinibot electrocuted Honchkrow and brought Rhyperior down to its sturdy with Earth Power before going down. Yasgarada finished it off with Flower Trick and hit the next Pokemon Mega Mawile with 1-2. Then my newly acquired Great Tusk just used Earthquake, which was all I needed to move over to the real boss battle, Giovanni. He's about to capture Mewtwo and rule the entire underworld of Pokemon, and me and Lance are here to stand in his way. Me and Lance start off by doubling up against Tapu Lele, taking it out first turn, which forces out Mewtwo, so we use Shadow Ball and Night Slash to once again kill that, but Dragapult also goes down. While the Mewtwo is now without any health, it decides to Mega Evolve into Mega Mewtwo Y, giving Giovanni basically a 7 Pokemon. Mega Salamence from Lance makes an entrance, but Mewtwo takes down my Pokemon with Aerosphere. Luckily, it's Aerial Age Double Edge is able to finish off the Scrafty, so I bring in my Iron Juggalus, while Giovanni sends out Excadrill. I go for the Dark Pulse on Mewtwo, but it isn't enough to kill, luckily Salamence goes down, Dialga comes in, Flash Cannon's Mewtwo, and that's the end of Wise Rain. Because of Rock Slides, I have to bring in my last Pokemon, Orthworm, while he sends out Tyranitar. We double up on the Tyranitar immediately with Body Press and Iron Head to force out the last Pokemon, Celesteela. Now it's finally two against two. We once again double up, this time on the Steel Mole with Flamethrower and Iron Head to take it down, making Celesteela an easy target for the both of us and sending Giovanni out of the cave. The police come to arrest him, but he manages to escape. To where nobody knows. Lance encourages me to go and take on Claire, the new replacement for Giovanni as the 8th gym leader, so let's head over to Viridian City. Let's hope she doesn't make me do a trial if we win against her, because I'm not heading all the way to Johto just to go to the Dragon's Den. The battle starts off great with Manfred against her Aerodactyl. Try to one-shot it with Iron Head, but because of his Focus Sash, it survives, sets up Stealth Rocks, and swaps out into Dragonite the next turn, who I'm able to take down with some Iron Heads and knock off. After surviving a Dragon Dance boosted Fire Punch. She then has a shiny Roaring Moon, the first Pokemon that was shiny in my first ever Scarlet and Violet playthrough. And sadly enough, I had to take this down with my very own Close Combat from Feather. Gear now almost fell to a single Earthquake, but a Fleur Cannon was my downfall. I then brought in Bebe, who didn't kill with an Ice Shard, survived a hit, and then finally killed with an Ice Shard. Mega Duraludon also got hit with one last Ice Shard before he took me out. I swapped in Squid bird used sport to put it to sleep earth powered it twice and took it down after surviving a steel beam my overgrown mushroom fell to naganaddle my graveyard dog did the last respects on the last two pokemon to get the last gym badge but this wasn't the last battle before the elite foreign champion we have two more rival battles to go but before we get into them we have now unlocked roaming pokemon but there is only one Pokemon I really wanted to use my Master Ball on. I could have captured a Chiyu, but it didn't want to stay in my Quick Ball, so I just let it roam free. The second roamer I ran into was the one. My favorite Generation 9 Pokemon, Walking Wake. I threw my Master Ball and used him against my battle with Mr. T. The battle didn't start off great because I had my Earthworm out against Staraptor. I got close combated and you turned into Sandy Shocks, could easily clean me up. With a Volt Switch that is, so a Charizard came out, I bring in Raptor and kill this thing with a Hydro Steam and a Dragon Pulse. Azumarill liquidated me, so Squidward just Giga Drained it twice to bring out Sneasler who could close combat, drop its own defenses and kill my giant mushroom with tentacles. I went into Armor Rouge, used Expanding's Force on it, but it used U-Turn first, going into Sandy Shocks. This was obviously its downfall. I then also used Armor Cannon on Staraptor to finish it off. King Ambit killed me with Sucker Punch. I then used Feather's Earthquake to take down King Ambit and finally Sneasler. That won't be the last we see of Mr. T, but it's time to head over to Brendan's final battle, who has a lot more legendary. He still has his Deoxys speed form, and for some reason I thought Iron Juggalus was going to be a very good 
would counter to it, but I got a reality check very quickly. Gwen then used Aqua Jet to finish it off, but his Mega Sceptile is obviously a hard counter to me. I brought in Armor Rouge, who got hit with Bullet Seeds and eventually left with 1 HP. This did up my speed 5 stages, meaning that I could outspeed the next turn, hit an Armor Cannon, and then went down to a Scale Shot. I sent in my Annihilate, but he got annihilated by a Bullet Seed. Those 5 hits in a row are really killing me. Luckily, Fetter survived one, hit a knockoff, and forced out Landorus. This Landorus takes me out, I bring in Eggman, use Triple Dive, easy kill, Jiraji goes down to two Earthquakes, Galarian Zebdos is my Kryptonite, I still hit a Triple Dive which means that Raptor can finish it off with Hydro Steam and the last Pokemon Hunt Tail only takes two Dragon Pulses and with that Brendan is defeated. Time to enter Victory Road, capture a last batch of Pokemon and then it's League time. Here we get a Flutter main, one of the most overpowered Pokemon ever created as it's clear Clearly dominating VGC right now. Secondly was Baxcalibur, personally one of my least favorite pseudo-legendary final forms. I just think its pre-evolution is way better. The last Pokemon I captured here was Roaring Moon, another great design, but one will sadly enough not use. I mean, I did use him against some of the Johto leaders because I needed some of their items like Jasmine's Choice Band, Koga's Life Orb, Price's Choice Scarf, and Chuck's Expert Belt and Focus Sash. There was only one more thing left to do and that was change all of my Pokemon's abilities to the right ones as well as getting the right natures. And here's the team I went with, Scone the Baxcalibur which will obviously be my best physical attacker and just a very well rounded mon in general. Secondly, Fantina the Flutter main for that damage with choice specs. I needed a good special attacker, you can't get any better than this, so we're rolling with it. Third, Squidward, it's a really good special defensive tank that can put people to sleep with Spore 100% of the time, so it's basically a no-brainer to go with it. Next up, Milo the Meowskarada, super fast, with a choice band, Flower Trick is going to hit like a truck every Every single time, and with protein in my arsenal now, everything becomes stab. Second to last is Doggers, who now is fluffy, which means that all of the contact moves will be halved in damage, but I do get a new weakness in fire. With a choice scarf, Last Respect is going to bulldoze through the competition, so a must on my team. And last up is Feather the Great Tusk, which has consistently been very good for me, so I decided to take him with me because he just never disappoints. Now it's time to take on Lorelei, starting out with Baxcalibur, with obviously the Life Warp and my Great Tusk that's holding a booster energy. I started off the battle by using Sunny Day to cancel out the rain and also hit the Polyrath with Glaive Rush which ended up leaving him with 1 HP because of its Focus Sash. I then take both of their Pokemon down with Ice Shard and Close Combat, but they brought in Iron Bundle and Kyogre which with its Primordial Sea immediately sets up the rain again, cancelling out my Sunny Day. They obviously had no mercy water spouting and hydro pumping both of my Pokemon, drowning them out. Then I bring in Protein Cat and Fantina to take down Kyogre with a flower trick and bring down Robo Delibird to its sash with Moonblast. I bring in Squidward while they send out Swampert and they obviously mega evolve. Luckily the rain is gone so the Swampert doesn't have Swift Swim. Squidward is able to survive a freeze dry with my Focus Sash while Fantina shadow balls the Delibird to take it down and Squidward drains all of the energy from the Swampert. Or at least almost all of it because it survived with a teeny tiny bit of HP, killed me and brought in her last Pokemon, Walk-In Wake. Two Moonblasts later and we have the win, baby. On to Bruno. First up, Infernape versus Fantina. Just two Psy Shocks do the trick. I sack my Tentacruel on the next Pokemon, Shiny Kron Zacian, and luckily he hits me with close combats, lowers his defenses, so Fetter can come in and clean up with Earthquake. Como O, Urshifu, and Iron Valiant all fell to Moonblasts, while the last Pokemon, Lucario, is able to take me out. I bring in Doggers, hit two last respects, and in the process, gain Bruno's respect as well. Fantina time. Starting out with a Hisuian Zoroark that gets Psy shocked as I was trying to take it out with another one, Burning Moon came in and totally negated my attack. So I then sagged Baxcalibur, brought in my Dawnfan, used Close Combat, and brought out more Shadow that somehow killed me with only two Shadow Sneaks, but I was able to hit a very hard hitting Earthquake. I then killed it with Flower Trick from Milo after surviving a Drain Punch. Her Mega Gengar obviously buried me. Squidward could come in, put it to sleep, 
use earth power twice, survive two sludge raves and win this matchup. I then also killed Chi Yu, Hisui and Zoroark till Goldengo with choice specs came out and killed me. One more Shadow Ball from Fantina and we could move on to Lance. Once again, the battle is easy. Fantina starts out Shadow Balling twice, killing Aerodactyl. Melmetal comes out, I swap in Squidward, get double iron bashed and put in the ground. Fitter kills it with two Earthquakes after surviving a double iron bash with 12 HP. Dragonite finishes me off with extreme speed. Skoen then comes in, hits an Icicle Crash, to force out Primal Dialga. Milo is somehow able to hit two play roughs to hit it just below half health, but an Aura Sphere is my death blow. Fantina then used Moonblast on this Dialga, Iron Juggalus also fell to Moonblast, and finally a shiny Mega Celamance is no different than the rest of his team. Moonblast it into Oblivion, baby. Time to move on to Mr. T, the champion. He still has his lead Feromosa, which I don't really have anything for, so I go for Miascarada Sucker Punch combined with Scone's Ice Shard to take down a very big threat. I did lose Miascarada in the process, that doesn't take away that the next Pokemon Mega Metagross is going to make my life hell. I swap in Squidward because it needs to get sacrificed here. Then I go into Doggers, hit two last respects, and that's Metagross finished. 4 against 4. You felt all the World Eater comes out, so I use one last respect, get taken out by Dark Hole, while Fantina can come in, Moonblast this thing out of the sky, and bring in Eternatus who somehow outspeeds Fantina with a Sludge Wave. Forcing me to bring out Scone with Glaive Rush, I am able to take down this Eternatus, but only because I survived with 1 HP because of my Focus Sash. His Imposter Ditto then takes me out with an Ice Shard. My last Pokemon is Fitter, so I use a Close Combat on this big boy, and the last thing on his team is a Shiny Miraidon. Super cool. This replaces the Groudon, and I think it's way better. But an Earthquake does finish the game for me. And with that, we have defeated Radical Rith with only the newly added Generation 9. Pokemon. I had a ton of fun playing with all of these new guys. It made Radical Red very refreshing and I think anybody and everybody should try it out. If you managed to beat Radical Red normal or hardcore mode with Generation 9 Pokemon, let me know all of your teams down below. But for now, I'm going to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.